What's up, everybody? Um, nice rainy Saturday out here. Uh, it looks like we got a interesting matchup here. Uh, DT versus ER Lucius from Italy. Uh, DT versus Emma, we'll call them. Uh, both good players. DT, of course, is uh, defending world champ. He just won a regional tournament last weekend, so it seems like he's been experimenting with some kind of unique lists. Uh, let's take a look here. All right, so DT is running the Rebel list. Um, he's the only person I know that runs Mern when he runs Rebels. He is running a spy list. Uh, he's got three spies between Mern, Mac, and Ahsoka. So that means uh, Comms Disruption is a very powerful card, able to block anything coming out of Emma's list. Uh, Emma, on the other hand, is also running um, one spy in Blaze, uh, which means he may have comms disruption, but he might not. Certainly not a required card if you only have one spy. Uh, but he probably is running Intelligence Leak. They, they both are. Uh, if you haven't run spies before, Intelligence Leak is probably the best spy card because it lets you see your opponent's hand um, so you won't have any surprises. Uh, and it also lets you remove a card from your opponent's hand. So it's really good for getting rid of really powerful cards like Blaze of Glory, especially, or Son of Skywalker, or On the Lamb. Um, so yeah, if you're running Spies at all, you usually want to be running Intelligence Leak. You do have to take Strain um, equal to the cost of the card you remove, but I mean... Three strain to get rid of on the lamb is is always worth it. Um, if you haven't really looked at Mern before, he is uh, or she rather is um, a pretty unique figure. If you have more command cards in your hand at the end of Mern's activation, uh Mern will become hidden, and she'll also hide one other figure. Let's just bring Mern's card up real quick. So here's what Mern looks like. Uh, at the end of your activation, if you have more command cards in your hand than your opponent does in his... You and another friendly figure within three spaces becomes hidden. It's actually um, pretty hard to pull off sometimes when you're playing against mercenaries because they have so many different ways to draw command cards. Um, and it's also tough sometimes against uh, Imperials who start the game with Rule by Fear, so get that early card advantage. Um, Mern's other ability is... Choose a hostile figure with a figure cost of three or less within three spaces. Form an attack or move with that figure. That is an ability that... It's very situational. Um, I mean, in the recent meta, most attackers were going to be at least four cost or higher. In fact, some lists won't even run any attacking units under under a figure cost of four. Uh, but elite riot troopers are figure cost of three. Um, you know, this, this was okay back when regular stormtroopers were around. The thing you want to do with false orders is you want to get your opponent to waste their conditions uh, 
with your attacks. So like if there was a focused stormtrooper, for example, and you used false orders, um, uh, that would be a huge swing. Um, Mern has a really strong command card. Let me look it up. It's called Fatal Deception. This lets you use false orders with a figure cost of five or less within five spaces. So that opens up a ton of options. You could use a jet trooper, you could use a weak way pirate, Greedo, Vinto, anything like that. Um, so yeah, if if there is um, an enemy figure that has, you know, hidden or focus, this is a, a huge deal. Um, but, you know, the thing about Mern is between false orders and field report, it's kind of hard to um, get those things off all the time consistently. And for four cost herself, she's not really a top tier figure. Um, but DT does really like her, so there there must be some value there. I guess he's figuring with the rise of the elite riot troopers, she'll make maybe a little bit of a comeback. Um, so we'll see about that. Um, the other figure that's kind of making a comeback in this match is Blaze, who uh, was at the top of the meta not too long ago, before Jabba's Realm dropped. Uh, troopers and Spies were the best combination. Um, and Blaze was in the list that won Worlds, so... Definitely not a weak unit, but we he doesn't see the table much anymore. Um, eight health is kind of vulnerable for six cost. Uh, and he has no defensive abilities. Uh, his best... Oh, so he is playing Intelligence Leak right now. Which means we will get to see what DT is holding in his hand. And DT is going to have to discard a card. DT... DT comms disrupt the intelligence leak. Very smart play because um, if Emma wanted to get rid of comms disruption with intelligence leak, he could have done so anyway. So it really doesn't cost DT anything to play comms disrupt right there. And that also prevents Emma from seeing the other three cards in his hand. So. Intelligence leak is, is always something you want to comms disrupt. So we don't get to see what is in DT's hand. Um, like I was saying before about Blaze, he has an ability called uh, Interrogate. It's a surge ability. He doesn't have to land the attack to use the surge. He could use that on a miss. What it does is uh, it lets you examine your opponent's hand and uh, discard um, one card out of your opponent's hand, but you have to discard one card of the same cost out of your hand. Let me just look that up. So here's Blaze. Uh, that's actually the uh, campaign version. Let's see if we can find the skirmish version. All right, here's the skirmish version. So intelligence leak or inter interrogate. Look at your opponent's hand and choose a command card. You may discard a card of equal or greater cost from your hand to discard the chosen card. Very strong ability. That's pretty much his whole reason why he gets brought. Green, yellow, yellow isn't a great attack for a six cost figure. Um, Adapt is actually a really good ability too, though. The first time your opponent plays a command card every round, 
choose one spire trooper, that figure becomes hidden. Uh, hidden is a great uh, benefit on uh, figures like Taro. Blaze himself can use it pretty well. It's not great on jet troopers because uh, they often roll too many surges to use. They really only have one useful surge. And that's the search for plus two damage. So a lot of the time, jet troopers don't need to be hidden. But it's it's good on Taro. It's good on Blaze. It's good on Riot troopers. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. So I haven't really been paying attention to this game. Uh, it looks like we missed the whole first round. But um, DT scores some points on objectives. And he's taken an end of round shot with Han Solo against a focused Jet Trooper. Emma plays uh, Brace for Impact in response. And a huge roll coming out from that focused Han. A max roll. Nine damage. Again, three blocks is six. Although um, Jet Troopers do have Agile. DT decides to add a Surge with Hera. So that Agile doesn't do anything. It's going to be 9 damage. Uh, ten, 10 damage, actually, against 3 blocks for 7. So Emma's going to have to toss a card here to save this Jet Trooper. DT does score... Four points from crates between Ahsoka at the bottom and on here at the top. Emma's positioning with Vader is a little questionable. He has Vader back, uh, the furthest figure back. Um, looks like Vader's not going to be able to get an end of round four stroke off. I'm not sure why he decided to play so conservatively with Vader. This is a map where you it's really easy to set up an end of round end of round four stroke uh because of the way the doors open before end of round. Instead, he just decides to move Vader up two spaces. Um that was only 6 damage actually. Let me count it again. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. Should have been 10 against 3 for 7, unless I missed a Zillow discard or something. Okay, so I did miss a discard. He discarded a uh, dark energy. Um, dark energy is a very useful card with Vader, but keeping that focused jet trooper alive is obviously more important. Vader this round, 1, 2, 3, 4, is not going to be able to get close enough to attack Han unless he has Force Rush or something like that. Emma definitely should have played more aggressively with his Vader positioning. Uh, actually, he, he could push Vader up with an officer. It's just Vader is not going to be able to do anything early in the round. DT all of a sudden has massively more command cards in his hand than Emma, so Emma decides to move his tarot up to engage Han instead of uh, activating his jet troopers that are about to die. Now he's going to perform a size advantage attack against Han. It's kind of a risky play to use cards like this against Han because 
if your opponent is holding on the lamb, it's a no-brainer to just drop on the lamb. Uh, you know, some examples of cards that you add before the attack goes through, before you play on the lamb, would be like size advantage. Um, there's, let's see, what else? Tools for the job is a big one. Element of surprise is a big one. Lucky for Emma, uh, Han doesn't have on the lamp, so Han becomes weakened. DT's probably going to activate his Han now because he wants to get rid of that weakened. He doesn't want to leave his Han exposed. Um, Han could easily die uh, from two focused jet trooper attacks, so he absolutely needs to go with Han right now. Ooh, Han has Heart of Freedom, which luckily lets him drop the weakened condition and heal two health and gain two movement points. So he's going to be able to... He could be really aggressive if he wanted to, but... The safer play is just to take a shot at Taro like he's doing. Another good roll from Han. Taro rolls an evade. Which blocks uh, that two damage surge. So Han re rolls and adds uh, some extra damage there. He actually added two damage, I think, from that re roll for six total damage. He's going to add uh, plus one damage with Hera right now. A lot of people uh, save Hera's Call the Shots ability. Um, for finishing things off, but a lot of the time they won't have an opportunity to use it after they save it for too long, so DT decides to get the extra damage out now while he can. His other big attacker is Ahsoka, and she's not really in position to attack, although she does have a lot of speed. She can move 6 and attack. Actually, I think she can move... Uh, with Vigor, she can actually move further than that. Let me just double check exactly how far she can move. So Ahsoka with Vigor gains two movement points, and then Four Sleep would let her move six more. So she could actually move eight and attack. So she is in striking distance to Taro. She could easily finish him off. Um, Taro has 13 health, so she doesn't necessarily need to be the one attacking him. I think between Hera, Mac, and um, Mern, I think he'll be finished off, especially because Gideon will focus Mac. 3PO will focus Hera or Mern, so. Ahsoka really could try to kill somebody else. DT is running 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 activations. Which I think is a lot stronger than running Han and Rangers and only getting 7. Um, So he will get the last activation this round, which means he can wait for Vader to come up and then unload on Vader with Ahsoka, which is probably what he wants to do. He's probably going to save Ahsoka for the last activation of the round. Uh, Emma over here really needs to open his door so Blaze can get some attacks off. Uh, it's pretty essential that... Emma reveal DT's hand since he does have so many cards. He also should be pushing his Vader up with his officers. He might want to put Vader... He's probably going to want to move Vader up to the north, where Hera and R2 are. 
because then maybe he can avoid that end of round Ahsoka attack. Ahsoka is pretty far back, but because of her abilities, she's not out of range at all. Um, if Emma opened his door, Ahsoka could even get to Blaze before he went, I think. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Not quite, so Blaze is kind of safe. Emma decides to play really cautiously, hiding his jet troopers behind the door on the bottom. This means that DT can take his time. He's going to go with R2 and Scomp to draw another card. Um, there is a spy card that lets you have your opponent shuffle his hand of command cards back into his deck and draw two. That would be a really strong card to play right now if uh, Emma had it. That card is called Strategic Shift. It sometimes sees some play in Spy List. It's not necessarily a uh, required take, uh, but it can often be useful in this meta, especially since um, against Hunter Lists, they often save a bunch of cards to use them all at once. So with Strategic Shift, you can completely negate those huge uh, Hunter combos. So Emma is pushing his Vader up north. So, Mern, actually, a focused Mern, comes down to attack Harrow. And with an extra surge, Mern rolls four damage and two surges. Um, Mern's surges aren't amazing. I think uh, she has a surge for plus one, maybe? Let me get her card back. Uh, she has a surge for plus two damage and a surge for plus two accuracy, so... Uh, with Element of Surprise, that 6 damage was just enough to finish off uh, Taro. Um, DT actually played Intelligence Leak there to discard Overrun, taking 2 Strain as damage. The reason he did that is, even though Emma only had 1 card in his hand, um, DT figured taking that card away would negate Emma's ability to use a card as a block. Intelligence Leak is usually better to use when your opponent has several cards in their hand, so like, DT could have saved it for the beginning of next round when Emma would have presumably had three cards in his hand. Um, I don't think it's super important that... Mern finished off that kill right there. 
because Mac actually has a surge where if he finishes off the kill, uh, he can force your opponent to discard a card. So, of course, Emma doesn't have any cards, so it, it doesn't make a huge difference. But Mac would have gotten a shot off on uh, Tarot anyway, and Hera would have also. So, the way it is now, Hera and Mac just aren't going to get attacks this round. So. So again, it wasn't like super important for DT to waste Intelligence Leak there, in my opinion. It did make Mern get that kill, but I don't think it was that important. DT does commit both Element of Surprise and Intelligence Leak to finish off Terra, who was, who was going to die anyway. So uh, DT, I guess, feels like he's sitting in a pretty good spot. He's very ahead on Material. He's sitting at 11 victory points. I know uh, the points here are kind of hidden. It's 11 to 0. Um, so he doesn't mind being aggressive with his command cards either. I mean, he's holding four more command cards, and Emma has zero. So it's, it's fine to be aggressive. DT wants to save Gideon's push for the end of the round to push. Uh, Han into a position where he can shoot at Vader if Vader comes up. So Emma has to watch out for that. He'll probably go with Gideon uh, with the second to last activation. And he'll probably focus Han and push Han up. Emma's activating his Jet Troopers now. Looks like he's hiding them with the rest of his group pretty far back. Emma's list is... Well, it's not a long-range list, so... He is utilizing this, what I like to call, uh, the Sniper Nest. It's a very safe, defensible position, but with Vader and Jet Troopers and Taro, you kind of need to get up in your opponent's face. Instead, Emma's like sending one figure at a time at DT, which is exactly what DT wants. DT able to take out Taro, taking almost no damage. He, he did take five with Han, but in exchange for a figure, that's not a large cost. DT still has on the lamb somewhere in his deck. I really doubt that DT is running Force Rush. If he was, he could... If he was ru running Force Rush, he could get to Blaze and kill him with Ahsoka right now. A focused hidden shot with Ahsoka could potentially do 8 damage easily in one attack. Emma really needs to find a way to start picking off some of DT's pieces. Unfortunately for him, now that DT's ahead, he's just going to be sitting in that box 
It's going to be a very hard box to crack without Taro. I'm really not sure if Emma has any chance of clawing his way back into this game, especially because he has no command cards. He's not starting the next round with initiative. We'll really see what he does with his Vader. Honestly, he should probably uh, he should probably keep his Vader somewhere safe at the end of this round because ET is starting with initiative. However, DT's probably going to take Blaze out before he gets to go next round. If DT's running Force Surge or something like that, he could easily take out Blaze and uh, a Jet Trooper and retreat with, with Ahsoka at the beginning of next round. Era is currently the one activating. He probably just wants to keep her with the rest of the box. There's no reason to be aggressive with Hera right now. She could get a shot on this focus jet up at the top, but that also gives Emma a lot more options with his Vader. So yeah, DT's just going to keep Hera back next to Han. He also moves her back one space to avoid the focus jet trooper getting flyby off on her. He doesn't want Hera to die in one hit from a focus jet. One, two, three, four. The jet can get to right here, so if Hera was in any of these any of these two spaces, uh, Emma would easily uh, be able to pull that shot off. And if Emma draws something like fuel upgrade then he could get to here and hit her where she was. So that's why DT decides to move her back. Hera's not really a strong attacker. She's okay. She does roll three die. She doesn't have a reroll though, and her surges are just surge for plus one and then a double surge for pierce two. So her surges are pretty bad. Especially against Zillow. So there's no reason to use her as an attacker now. She's better as just someone that distributes surges once per round. So DT did activate Gideon earlier, and instead of pushing Han up to get an end of round shot off, he pushes Ahsoka up. One mistake that a lot of people make is relying on Han's end of round attack. You really don't need Han to attack at the end of every round. You just need to keep Han alive long enough to make up his points. So Emma does decide to move his Vader in. So had Gideon push Han up, he would be getting an end of round attack. Instead, I think Ahsoka's close enough to get to Vader. Yeah, she can easily get to Vader from there. So Emma playing very aggressive with Vader. I mean, at this point, he needed to make a move sometime. He probably wants to draw to take initiative, although I honestly don't think it matters that much. He's going to want to... Here comes the Ahsoka attack on Vader. Zillow technique is still untapped, so this is not going to be piercing three. Five damage. And two surges would be uh, six damage, pierce three, which was really just pierce one.
which would be 3 damage on Vader. DT telling Emma to reroll his die for one less, so that would be four damage on Vader now. Emma has no cards to discard for block. I also forgot to mention these jet troopers, the way they got focused is Emma is running Vader's Finest, which allows uh, figures to it's a double action for, I think, two movement points, and you become focused. Uh, zoom in here. Discard one harmful condition and become focused for, for two actions, so you don't get any movement points. But um, becoming focused is pretty decent on jets. I mean, they don't get a reroll, but the green die doesn't... What they want is damage. And green die usually gives you damage. The extra surges, like I said, don't usually help them that much. Four, a four die roll with only one useful surge uh, can often be pretty weak. I guess Ahsoka's Surge is actually for plus two. So it's actually seven damage. Pierce one. For five total damage on, on Vader, not four. So that aggressive move with Vader, he is going to get an end of round attack off on somebody. It is going to be minus one Surge because of 3PO though. And then he is going to get attacked at the beginning of the round. He could potentially kill Han with one attack. That's what he wants to do, but 3PO being in the way really hurts. He might actually want to move Vader up two spaces and attack 3PO. I think that's his best chance of getting to Han. Instead, he's going to go for Mern. I think probably going for 3PO would have been a, a little bit better, but, you know, that could always result in a dodge, so. It goes for the more reliable. Mern only has 6 health, so this roll would be enough to kill. So Emma on the board for kills now with four points. That is going to stop the bleeding of all these hidden conditions coming in. DT's list is running Heroic Effort, which means he can, every time a figure dies, he can put a card on the bottom of his command card deck and draw a card, which is good for shuffling away useless cards. Like, for instance, if he was running Mern, Mern's command card, he would have just uh, shuffled that to the bottom of his deck. And that's also really good for getting to cards like on the lamb faster so it's very likely now that he's holding on the lamb which makes it a very risky play for vader to try to jump on han emma's jet troopers are not in good position to support vader here dt decides to activate han first Uh, this could be a sign that he's not holding on to on the lamb uh, because it disincentivizes Emma to attack Han right now. A massive, massive roll coming out from Han. All damage. We are looking at 
11 damage against two blocks for nine against Vader. A massive roll. Plus a surge from Hera. When Emma re-rolled his die, he didn't think about that. So, 13 damage against two blocks for 12. This attack would just kill Vader. An incredible roll from Han. This is just ridiculous. And he adds positioning advantage for an extra one. Amazing. This would be 14 damage. Holy moly, that's the biggest Han roll I've ever seen. 14 damage against Vader. That is the most you could have done. And like that, Vader is out of the game before he even gets to activate round 3. So Emma's aggressive play with Vader really bites him. A huge roll from Han. This is likely the end of the game. Emma sitting with one group of jet troopers and Blaze, two officers, against DT's almost full list. The only figure that DT's missing is Mern. DT's Han just doing massive work. An unbelievable attack. Emma is just stunned by that result. Han even had a reroll that he didn't have to use. He could have rerolled one of those die, but he didn't need to. Emma not giving up on this game, hoping for a miracle. He doesn't have many options. I guess he's going to try to kill uh, Ahsoka before she can activate with his jet troopers. That's really his only option right now, although. He actually decides to go with Blaze instead. And he does play Strategic Shift, so... This makes DT discard his whole hand of command cards and draw two. So, a very good play there by Emma, but it, unfortunately it's way too late. Emma should... Sh had Emma held Vader back in a more conservative spot... He might have been able to work his way back into the game after that strategic shift. But, you know, as it stands now, two jet troopers are not enough to go up against Han, Ahsoka, Hera, 3PO, and Gideon, and Mac. Both 3PO and Gideon have yet to go this round, so when DT does start unloading at the end of this round, they are going to be focused attacks with Ahsoka and Mac. He might decide to focus Han and push Han back up. A massive advantage for DT right now. The centerpieces of Emma's list are gone. Emma hoping for some kind of miracle here. DT activates 3PO and focuses Ahsoka. Ahsoka can get to almost all of... All of Emma's figures. I'd be surprised if DT didn't activate Ahsoka now and try to kill one of these jet troopers before they got to go. 
and indeed that is what he's going to do. At this point, DT doesn't have to play conservatively at all. The name of the game is just cleaning up what Emma has left. And if he can kill this jet trooper in one attack, which it looks like he will, so actually not quite enough if Emma tosses a card, that would be 7 damage. So Emma does have to toss, take initiative to keep the jet alive with 1 health left. But at this point, DT really can just throw his figures at the wall. No reason to play cautiously, it's just a cleanup game. This does give Emma some options though. He can, uh... well, actually. Emma has to watch out because Ahsoka has a couple cards that could finish off this 6 health uh, Jet Trooper. Um, one being Right Back At You, which is Ahsoka's unique card. It deals 2 damage to the attacker before the attack occurs. So that would kill this Jet Trooper before he even has a chance. Uh, I mean, Emma doesn't really have any options, though. He has to he has to attack Ahsoka at this point. It doesn't make a difference. If Emma can't kill Ahsoka here, the game is... I mean, the game's already over, so he, he has to go for it, and he acknowledges that fact, so. DT doesn't look like he's playing a card, so he is going to take the attack. Uh, a decent A decent roll coming out. Seven damage against two blocks for five looks like. So lucky for Emma, DT didn't have right back at ya. His other jet's gonna move in. Another good attack. This time for another 5 damage. Ahsoka has 12 health. So she should be dead uh, at the beginning of next round. Unless DT has take initiative. DT telling us that he was running t right back at you in his deck. And that a strategic shift card saves uh, a jet trooper there. DT had to reshuffle right back at you back into his deck. I'm not saying that he has four movement points back with the jet. Uh, sorry, left with the jet. But I'm not sure how he got to that number. I think he was started here. He moved one, two, three, four, and attacked, which gave him two more with flyby. So um, maybe I counted wrong, but I don't think he could have gotten to where he went.
Gideon focuses Hera, actually, and pushes her up. Ah, uh, so... DT corrects me. He, uh... With Vader's finest, you can perform an attack and get two movement points after. That's what I missed. So he did have four movement points. DT pushes Hera up with Gideon, which means she is going to be in range to attack one of these jet troopers, and she's focused in everything. Um, I mean, he really didn't need to focus her. He could have focused Han or Mac, but, you know, at this point, it really, really doesn't matter. <laughs> Another massive roll from DT. I think that's a maximum for Hera. With six, seven damage, pierce two. Amazing. The dice are on fire for DT this game, although I, I really don't think he needed it. Uh, Emma's still not giving up. 30 points for DT. No end of round shot available for Han. DT is running uh, Rebel High Command, which means he draws an extra card at the end of the round. That's how he's been getting so many cards in his hand. So that strategic shift, all of a sudden it doesn't seem that effective. DT has six cards back in his hand with a seventh coming from R2 next round. DT also has take initiative, no surprise there. Uh, luckily, Emma has negation. Emma's going to have to attack Ahsoka here. Um, it would probably be, be smart to attack her with Blaze in case she does have right back at you now. And Blaze can move up and get line of sight. He's going to go with the Jet Trooper and hope that she doesn't have right back at you. Actually, he's going to play Grenadier. Interesting. Uh, he can target this space right here. Uh, he needs two damage to kill Ahsoka. And he gets it. Also, two to Hera. He also has line of sight to Hera, so he could attack and get two movement points. No matter where he puts this jet, though, it's vulnerable to somebody. Unless he kills Ahsoka or Hera outright in one attack, but it's pretty unlikely. With, I think it's imp it's impossible actually. He has one action left he is going to go for era he'll have two movement points after this attack but there's not really any place couldn't do much better with that attack he does do three damage but it's not enough Now DT's turn to activate Hera before she dies. DT's going to activate Mac instead of Hera. This does expose Hera to dying to an officer, but... I hate to say it, but this game is already over, so it doesn't. A lot of this stuff doesn't make a difference. Um, Emma should convert 
to block uh, Max Surge because Mac can do critical hit to get Emma to discard a card. Actually, he actually, I think, could save it if he... Actually, no, I don't think he can save it. Critical hit adds Pierce 2, which he could block with Zillow. Uh, so if he added a block and converted... Yeah, I don't think there's any way he can save this Jet Trooper. So yeah, he should he should convert a block to an evade to block critical hit at least. That way he doesn't have to discard a command card. Ah, uh, so actually ET would score uh, six points from this kill because he gets the points from Vader Spinus. So that does end the game. So, not a very even matchup. That Han attack against Vader just completely ending the game right there. Um, probably no point in even playing it out after that, but Emma does stick, it, stick in there um, and see what he can do. But DT just massively rolling over his list. I think um, Emma's list is a little weak. He's running kind of a weird combination of stuff. Blaze is his uh, adapt ability. Uh, I don't think Emma used it one time this game, actually. I don't recall seeing any Imperial figures hidden. Maybe he did the first round and I just missed it but after that he had plenty of opportunities to hide a figure and he just didn't do that um the only figures that really benefit from the hidden you can hide jets to keep them a little safer but uh your hide priority should be tarot I think Tarot's overrated as a figure. Large figures are hard to maneuver. Um, he does have some decent abilities, and distributing weakened is really good against certain lists. But he is really hard to keep alive for very long, uh, and Emma loses him almost immediately in this game. Uh, so I think with Emma's list, you really have to play a lot more aggressively than he did. Um, you could see at the beginning of round one, he had his Vader pushed to this back hallway, which is, he, he could have been up here instead. Um, so definitely not the best place for Vader. In fact, I think if you're running a Vader list on this map, you might want to open a door early to let Vader out. DT did have some pretty scary firepower with Han able to shoot twice at the end of the round, especially since DT's running an 8 activation list that guarantees that Han's going to get that last end of round slot. Uh, Emma says that the problem with his list is range, but range isn't really a problem if you're playing super aggressive. So, he's saying he wasn't sure whether to be aggressive with Tarot or Vader. The truth is, if you're going to be aggressive with one of them, you should be aggressive with both of them. Leaving one of them out there to die is, is the worst thing you can do with them. DT able to just pick off Tarot for free at the beginning.
So I think you could um, give this game to DT based not only on play, but also on strength of list. And you have to say, I guess, something about the dice. DT having some very good rolls, but I think DT just beat Emma on every aspect of the game here. DT's list is actually pretty interesting. I haven't seen this exact list yet. Um, I have seen DT running a similar list uh, before Ahsoka was out. He was running um, Han, or not Han, Gideon, 3PO, R2, Hera, Mac, Mern, and I think he had uh, Jedi Luke in there, and I'm not I'm not exactly sure what else, but I've seen that combination of support before, but I haven't seen it with Han and Ahsoka as the damage dealers. It's um it's a pretty interesting concept. I think it's pretty similar to the list I was running with Han and Luke. I think Han really benefits from having an eight activation list. Um, because it guarantees that he gets to go last, which really benefits him. Um, I like I like the spy flavor. I think rebels do have a problem where, whether you're running a spy flavor or smugglers, they don't really have the perfect unit to fit in around four or five points. Um, in this case, I think Mern is kind of the weak link. Not that Mern's like a terrible figure, but I think in this list, Mern is probably the weaker unit. In my Han Luke list, Jin, I think, is the weak link for five points. I don't think she really uh, makes up her value. Um, but, you know, just one figure being a little bit weaker, especially in the four to five point range, doesn't break the list. Um... And, you know, with Rebel High Command and uh, Heroic Effort, you're really able to get exactly the cards you want in your hand. So, um, you know, some of the cards that haven't been played yet, E.T. still had On the Lamb. He had Right Back Atcha. So there's some very strong cards left in his deck. Uh, so... Yeah, de definitely um, a decent list to look at. I think um, the Rebel Han lists kind of struggle more against lists with a lot of health. Like, I think the double E-Riot list is pretty strong against this list just because you don't have a ton of attackers. I think Han and Ahsoka being your only good attacks. Um... I mean, you do get a lot of bonuses from Hera, Gideon, 3PO. But really just two sources of outgoing damage. So a list like Double e Rights can swarm you and, and kind of make your life difficult. Especially if they start to take out your support units. Um, it also kind of struggles against the Mercenary Hunter list, just because... They have so many ways of dealing with Han's cunning white die. They could force him to reroll and then tough luck it. Uh, they can heighten reflexes it. So, I mean, Han with 12 health is actually really fragile. Um, and if Han dies, this list absolutely falls apart, I think. So, it's, it's an interesting concept for a list. Um, I think it has potential. I like the spy sub flavor, um, but I'm not sure if it's gonna like take over the meta or anything. But it's a it's a cool list to watch. Um, it's a shame that uh, the matchup swung so heavily in DT's favor early because it would have been interesting to see how this list survived had Ahsoka or Han died earlier. Um, but yeah, uh, another strong game from DT. So thanks for watching everybody. Uh, 
leave some comments if you have any questions, or uh, feel free to follow me uh, to get notified whenever I start a cast. It's uh, pretty haphazard these days. So, thanks for watching.